Woo! This show caused a lot of controversy. Whee! What up, Get Nation? It's your boy, Snaggletooth, here. As you all know by now, Netflix just dropped their original series, uh, She-Ra. It's based off the She-Ra from the past, and we're going to go over it and talk about it a little bit. The differences and the controversy that's going on around this uh, show. So let's talk about what She-Ra is for a second. She-Ra is an animated cartoon from 1985 by Larry Dottilio and J. Michael... No, not saying it. I'm not saying it. You can't make me do it. It was a spinoff from the show He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. If you guys know that show, good. If you don't, go watch it. So in the original series, He-Man is given a sword exactly like his own. He's told to go into this other dimension and give the sword to a chosen one. The chosen one happens to be a woman by the name of Adora. She's been living with these bad guys known as the Horde, and she's been brainwashed by them their whole her whole life. After she received the sword, some shenanigans happen. Once she's given the sword, she turns out that it turns out that she is the long lost sister of Prince Adam. And she is also what's called She-Ra, which is the equivalent to He-Man. In the new series, it plays out a lot the same way except there's no mention of Prince Adam or her having a brother. Adora is raised by the Horde. She is brainwashed until she comes across this sword. When she has the sword she then meets Glimmer and Bo and Glimmer and Bo kind of teach her that the ways of the Horde are wrong and that she's working for the bad guys and she sees this and she ditches the Horde and joins the rebellion problem comes in where she had a couple of friends that were in the horde and now there's drama between her and her ex-friends that were in the horde one thing that i noticed is that the actual characters they're very simplified the art of them is very simplified but the backgrounds are very beautiful and the animation is on point like some of the things they do with the animation is very spectacular on point she's like you can't beat it and a lot of people are saying they're trying to get rid of gender and they're trying to kill gender off uh, by doing this androgy androgynous character. No, I don't think so. I think they made a 16 year old girl look like a 16 year old girl for a kid's show. And I think that's the basis of what the design is. This was pointed out to me by uh, Animation Junkie. If you look up his channel, he pointed out that in the original series, several of the characters looked a lot alike. And. <laughs> And, and that's because the characters were made to sell toys and all the toys had one figure the the thin Barbie figure of course <clears throat> I didn't catch She-Ra until I was older and I had to go back and re-watch some episodes just to refresh my memory about what everybody looked like and what everybody's powers were and how everything play, played out and uh, I have to say the original is very corny but it's still good it, it doesn't hold up at all but it's still something you could watch on a Saturday night when you're not doing anything else. This new animation is very modern. It's very built towards little kids and little girls. I didn't relate to it at all. And I guess that's, I could take off points for that, but I can't because it's not made for me. I mean, I still like it, but I recognize the fact that it's not, I'm not its target demographic. It, it's not original. It covers ground that has been already covered by Shows like Steven Universe and Avatar, and it has that kind of Avatar feel to it if you watch the show. But that's not a bad thing. I actually loved Avatar, and I love Steven Universe. Hordak. Hordak was another problem I had with this show, is that he didn't really do anything. Why even show him? Like, why bring him in? Like, just leave him for season two. I don't know. Well, maybe we'll, in season two, he'll do a lot more. But in this season one, he didn't really do too much. Oh, there's a lot of controversy. Controversy with his body, the controversy with the new creator. There are some LGBT undertones, but I don't think it was like in somebody's face. There wasn't like overt LGBTQ like propaganda in this at all. What I will say is that some people aren't actually critiquing the show. They say it's SJW bullshit. They're criticizing acceptance and they're criticizing representation. And they use this show as a push point for their ideas. 
and they don't really care. They're not. They don't really care about it. If they did, if they did really care about the show, you would see it. You would see a critique of the show and not a critique of SJWs, as they so put it. Like I said, this show is not perfect. There's some issues with originality. Um, you can compare it to Avatar, and you can compare it to Steven Universe a lot. Also, there's an issue of me not being able to relate to the show. I know a lot of grown people won't be able to relate to the show, but you have to remember, it's not for you, technically. It's for, like, little kids. And definitely, if I had kids, I would let them watch the show. I strongly recommend this show. It's not going to blow you away on a Saturday night, but it definitely will entertain you and will entertain the family. I give it an A-. minus. I give it an A-. minus. I can't take off any points for it, except for the points I told you already. Uh, Alright, you guys, let me know what you think. Comment in the section below whether you liked it, whether you didn't like it. Do you think it's propaganda, LGBTQ SJW propaganda or do you think it's actually a good show with good message give me a like if you like this give me a thumbs down if you hated it alright you guys that's it for today this is get snaggletooth and I'm out in the original series she will was uh, in the original uh, in the original series she will was uh, in the original series uh,